Hello everybody, this is Michael Campbell with Klausica, and I'm sitting down today with Jack Halpern. I've been a fan of Jack Halpern's work for more than 20 years. He's one of the first um, large-scale uh, kanji dictionary makers, uh, especially between uh, Japanese and English. And 20 years later, more than a dozen languages, I think you said 14 or, or more? Yes. Um, perhaps more in the future. But um, you're showing me something just now that was uh, of, of really great interest. Um, as we know, in, in Japanese, there's a lot of um, homonyms, especially in verbs like kaeru, and knowing which uh, kanji should be used in this specific case. And you've got these really amazing tools that you've developed, and perhaps it would be great to integrate between our platforms. Um, but I would like you to kind of share that with our audience here. Okay. Uh, hi. This is Jack Halpern. I'm the head of the CJK Dictionary Institute, and we specialize in uh, CJK and Arabic lexicography. On the one hand, we compile dictionaries for humans, for learners, learners' dictionaries. On the other hand, we compile very large-scale databases for software development, especially for machine translation and natural language processing, uh, like search engines and so on. So to answer your question, so this is a dictionary of the Japanese homophones, like kaeru. It's actually the first one, the only one in existence, as far as I know. It shows you the, uh, the differences and similarities between homophones, which are pronounced exactly the same, but have different meanings and are written in different kanji. So here you've got kairu with hen, and kairu with dai, and kairu with uh, uh, kan. kan. And if you, uh, so these are the examples of kairu for that. Now if you press on, on, uh, on this link here, it leads you into my main kanji dictionary. And that looks just like the paper one that I remember. It yeah. is. It yeah, is okay. like the paper one. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's got all kinds of features Beautiful. that the paper one doesn't have. Oh, so, really? Okay. So we can link between dictionaries. So usage, homophones usage is one of them. We have another dictionary for synonyms, for kanji that express similar concepts. Uh, so recently we started doing this. So people buy like a, a bundle, I think they call it, where you have like two or three apps and you get it for cheaper and you can link between them. Oh, okay. That's really impressive. So, uh, what what are uh, what are in some of the ways that you're actually developing this in, into the future? Are there are there new um, avenues that you want to develop? Uh, one of the things we're doing now is we're translating a subset of the dictionary, the Kyoiku Kanji, the okay. one thousand six characters into twelve languages from the educational set. That the educational set, okay. uh, which looks it's basically identical in format. Uh, the first one. What's the difference between the kyoiku and the and the joyo? Well, kyo, joyo is is uh, it's a difference in number. So the kyoiku is is smaller the than the joyo. Kyoiku is one thousand and six, and the joyo is one thousand and no two thousand or two thousand. It's over two thousand. Just it about two, yeah, yeah, it changed. Now we're doing that in twelve languages, and okay. the first one has already been published, which is Esperanto of all things. Because you're an Esperanto. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so just a little side note, you do Esperanto here in Japan. You do um, Yiddish as okay, well, right? Th these are my languages, okay? He's got a lot of languages. Oh, okay. wow, okay. Here's one sentence. Uh, I am the king of joy, happiness lives in my heart, written in all the languages that I speak. Okay, and so we've got here uh, Hebrew, Japanese, Yiddish, Spanish, Portuguese, Esperanto, German, Chinese, Arabic. What have you got on the back there? Vietnamese, and that's that's the end as for the languages that I speak. Speak. Okay. The other ones, when people ask me how many languages do you speak, well, I you're speaking I, Taiwanese to me uh, yeah, yesterday I, I, and today. I, I that, don't was, count, that doesn't count. That but doesn't. your pronunciation's really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh wow, I, I understand you're speaking Taiwanese to me. I mean, so it takes the other time. Ones are yeah. Taiwanese. Uh, I'm Let Cantonese me see. a little bit. What I see quite a. Yeah, yeah okay. Palestinian Arabic is something I really want to learn very oh, much. Okay. That's a, I hear that's a really uh, appealing, uh, appeasing sounding Arabic. One yeah, of the most I, I ones. like it a lot. And when I go to Israel and I try to speak in, in, in standard Arabic, they look at me, you know, they, they can understand me, but practically no one actually speaks it. Oh, okay. So spoken living Arabic is dialect Arabic. You don't go to the Arabic world speaking in standard. Well, well, that's unless, what I, well, I go to Egypt. Unless you're an official, right? I, no, but what, what else can I do? I speak standard. Okay. So that's what you. That's, so what, that's go, all you I, can do. When right? I'm riding okay. in an Egyptian taxi, I have to speak to him in standard Arabic. He understands me, but understands. I don't understand what he answers. So. It is like a different language. Yeah. It is. A, oh, it's quite different. You have to watch more Egyptian TV and films. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, exciting projects you're working on, and um, and it's a it's a great pleasure to actually meet you finally because 
of the Esperanto and Yiddish aspect of this, and also you've got this all this background in, in Hebrew and Arabic. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that we can work on together. You mentioned Yiddish. I might mention that uh, I'm the head of the Japan Yiddish Club. Right. Okay. I'm a native speaker. And you're a native speaker. <laughs> and I have like about 10 students, and we're, we have a lot of fun singing Yiddish songs and telling jokes and stuff like that. And that's a, that's a really a fascinating thing that you're actually a native speaker of Yiddish, which is almost impossible to to find in the world today. I mean, unless I unless I it's meet somebody, unless I meet somebody who can introduce me to their mother or father or you know, but it's it's quite it's quite rare. You know, Yiddish. Um, we we should do some more work with Yiddish and get it out there to the public. Yeah. Do you support Yiddish in your? Of course, I support. No, we we don't have Yiddish on Glossika, but I mean, I'm. I have 7,162 languages on my wall chart. I support all of them if I could. <laughs> and, I, and Yiddish is in there, so. Okay. All right, so thank you very much for talking to me today.